GX Duel Academy, such a great game, probably one of the greatest games ever created in the history of mankind. In fact, its large range of characters and complex battle system really make it stand out. In your dream scrub, okay, this is a serious guide for a serious game, and if you're a slifer slacker, then get out, okay? So anyways, I wanted to show you what it takes to beat the game, and a lot of the hints we get on how to reach the maximum rank come from the test proctor after having progressed really far through the game, and then not meeting the certain requirements, he'll tell you what you're lacking. So, he tells us that we basically need four things in order to reach King of Games. You're going to need 60% on the written exam, complete all the time duels, get 200 wins, including 10 wins on each character, and then finally, you need to collect every single card in the game. Fulfilling these four requirements allows you to reach the maximum rank and ultimately beat the game. So I'll be going through all of these and showing you how to complete them and the first thing we have to do is get 60% on the written exam and to make this easier we first need to go over how exams even work. There's going to be three sections, the written, the timed, and the practical and you're going to have 500 points available to you if you get everything correct, but you only need 300 points to pass the test. The written exam is the first section of each monthly exam and is comprised of 10 questions laid out in multiple choice form. You will get 10 points for every correct answer towards your current exam score. But the game also keeps track of how well you're doing over multiple exams, so for every correct question, you're going to get 0.5% towards your written exam rating. Since there are 10 questions, that means if you get every answer correct, you're going to get a maximum of 5% per exam. This means it's going to take at least 12 exams, and that is if you never miss a question for 12 exams straight. Now, keeping track of this number would be a hassle, but luckily we have the brand new technology of personal PDAs in order to help us keep track of this number. The second part of each exam is a time duel, which is essentially a dual puzzle, and if you complete the puzzle in the amount of time given to you, then you get the 100 points for that section. If you make a mistake, then you can press start and start over, but each time you start over, you're going to lose 10 points off your score, so it's best to just take your time and think about it. Now, you'll be given a random time duel to do for your exam, but to access them all, you're going to go to your room and scroll all the way to the right. And here, you will find all the time duels, and again, you're going to need to complete all of these in order to beat the game. Some of these are actually pretty difficult, so I'm going to include a link to a written guide and also a link to a video guide in the description. The last part of the exam is always a practical. This means you're given an objective and you must complete the objective in order to gain points. You actually don't need to win the duel or get all the points from this section. In fact, as you see here, during the spell exam, I played just enough spells to get enough points to get to 300, then you can surrender the duel. Winning the duel and completing the duel doesn't get you anything. You can check this number in the middle of a duel by pressing start and selecting status. The exams really serve as a way to transition in between dorms and update your rank. Passing the test allows you to get into Slifer Red and Raw Yellow pretty much at whatever time you want without any restrictions. However, in order to make it into Obelisk Blue, you must first have 50 wins and complete 50 time duels upon passing the test. Finally, failing the test will give you the rank Dropout Boy and automatically put you in Slifer Red. 
Next, we need to get 200 wins, including 10 wins on each main duelist in the game. We know there are 18 main duelists, and defeating each 10 times will give you 180 wins. This means you have 20 wins that you can get on whoever throughout the game. Some of these characters can be dueled regardless of what dorm you're in, while others require you to be in their specific dorm in order for them to appear. You will also need to unlock three of these characters as they do not appear automatically. In order to unlock Blair and Gerard, you must first spend a certain amount of time in the Slifer Red dorm. After spending enough time in Slifer Red, they will appear as new question marks to be found. I recommend staying in Slifer Red until both of them appear and then moving on to Raw Yellow. If you've stayed in Slifer since day one, then Blair will appear January 6th while Gerard appears February 3rd. Lastly, in order to unlock Zane, you must first meet requirements in order to get his unlock event to occur. Keep in mind that this event doesn't automatically occur after meeting the requirements, so it could take a couple of tries to get it to trigger. Eventually, meeting Cyrus on the weekend will lead to a situation where he calls you Jaden, and then take you to a duel that is similar to a timed duel in which you can't make any wrong moves and must complete. After completing this, Cyrus will drop his power bond and Alexis will tell you about Zane. Later on in the day, you will be forced to confront Zane by the ocean in which you have to duel him. Luckily, you can win or lose in order to unlock him. The last thing to do is to collect all the cards in the game. And since there are so many, it can seem overwhelming, but it's really about buying the packs that you have available to you. You want to collect all of the basic sets, which you get automatically as time progresses through the game. Following the basic packs, you have your tutorial packs, which can be unlocked by viewing the tutorial associated with the pack theme. You can watch these tutorials on your first day during your conversation with Cyrus, or you can find these tutorials in your room, and you're going to need to watch 9 tutorials in order to unlock all these packs. Of the tutorial packs, there are 5 packs that unlock another pack once you collect 90% of the set. These are Fusions Spell Collection 1 and 2 and Trap Collection 1 and 2. In order to unlock a pack later in the game, we're going to need at least 90% of all the sets we have available to us in order to do that. In order to check how much of a set that you've collected, once you buy a pack, you will see a number in the upper right hand corner. This tells you how much of the set that you currently have. I would aim for at least 92% or higher on all the sets. The rest of these packs are unlocked through meeting certain conditions or completing certain events. You will actually unlock a lot of these packs already over the course of getting your 200 wins, and remember these are only available on Saturday. The Tuesday visit also includes some exclusive packs, and these are obtained on your road to 200 wins, but it also includes a very special pack, Dorothy's Gift. Once you buy enough of all the sets that you've collected, you will unlock Dorothy's Gift, and this is the most important pack in the game. Your card collection percentage is displayed in your PDA right above your written exam score. Once this number reaches 90%, you will be able to buy Dorothy's Gift in the shop on Tuesdays. Now, it's expensive and you can only buy 10 of these packs per week, but your pulls from these packs will have an extremely high likelihood of giving you cards that you don't already own. What this means is that we can collect every single card in the game without having to unlock every single pack in the game. Also, this is the only pack that contains Shining Flare Wingman, so you will need to buy it eventually. When it comes to paying for all this, I estimate it's going to take 150 to 250,000 DP in order to get all the cards. This number will depend on how patient and conservative you are with your spending. For instance, you can save a lot of money by buying packs one or a few at a time instead of in large amounts. 
You can also save before your shop visits and then reset if you don't get the card you want. If you're aiming to do this as cheaply as possible, there are six more packs in the game that you can unlock. These are obtained by doing storyline events in the game, but technically they're optional, so I won't go into much detail. But if you're trying to save as much money as possible, make sure you have unlocked at least these three, which are the easiest and most commonly unlocked. Over the course of a normal playthrough, you will probably get around 100,000 DP from getting your 200 wins and extra events. This means we're going to need a little bit of extra money in order to buy all the cards. Now, there are two really good ways of farming in this game. The first farm is the Dropout Boy farm. After failing an exam, you can duel Fontaine, and if you win, you gain DP equal to your life total at the end of the duel. Once you have a strong monster on your side of the field, your opponent won't attack your weaker creatures, even if you leave something like a Spirit of the Breeze in attack mode. You basically want to get to a point where you have three or four life gain creatures that activate during your standby phase every turn. With this board, you can stall along while you gain life points every turn and eventually win the duel whenever you have enough life. And with this farm, you can save before you duel Fontaine and quit if things go really bad. The second type of farm is called the Primal Seed Farm, and while this is a little bit expensive to set up, it will definitely pay off in the long run. Using a combination of these five cards plus a machine monster allows you to infinitely loop the limiter removal in order to pump your machine creature up to a really high attack value. The amount of DP you earn from this farm is dependent on the attack value of the machine creature you use. The higher attack, the more money you'll get. With a very high attack value, you can get up to 3 million DP per duel. I made a video about this farm previously, so if you have any questions about it, make sure to watch the video and look at the description. Since 3 million DP is a little bit overkill for what we need to do, I use a cannon soldier which has 1400 attack and as a result I'm going to get 900,000 DP which is plenty to complete the game. While the primal seed farm is a little bit intense to set up, having this much money completely removes any aspect of budget or need to conserve money. You have so much money you can literally buy out the whole shop on both the weekend and the weekdays, and after doing all this, once you buy the final pack, you will see a very rare line of dialogue for when they run out of packs completely. After buying out all the packs on the weekend, you're going to do the same thing on your Tuesday visit. This makes unlocking Dorothy's gift very easy, and you also have enough money to buy it in maximum quantities every week. No matter which way you decide to collect all the cards, you should have all the requirements you need in order to reach King of Games. From this point, all you need to do is sleep until you reach your next exam. Upon completing and passing the last exam, the test proctor will confirm that you have reached all the requirements and then finally give you that coveted King of Games rank. After choosing a dorm you want to stay in, Slife a Red for Life by the way, the Chancellor invites you into his office to congratulate you personally. And then finally, after 3000 years, you reach King of Games rank Congratulations! And so yeah, that's how you beat the game, and if you have any problems or need any help, make sure to ask me in the comments, I love responding to the comments. And I'm gonna make another video with the special event duelists such as like Jinzo, the Duel Giant, you know, the Chancellor, 
So do make sure to subscribe and also please like the video if you want to see more stuff like this and also recommend to me any game, any other Yu-Gi-Oh game you want to see me do videos on, make sure to let me know. Alright y'all, 